Good afternoon, this is Sean Golding with Golding and Golding, here to discuss the basics of collection due process versus collection appeal program. Uh, unfortunately, if you're listening to this presentation, then you're already stuck in the IRS crosshairs and figuring out what to do about it, right? Um, these are used to, uh, to cease, halt, or avoid certain collection activities by the IRS. Now, uh, it could be used in many different scenarios, but, but here we focus exclusively on offshore uh, related matter. So in our neck of the woods, the way this normally happens is the following. Taxpayer learns that they had to file either a late foreign trust reporting form or form 3520 for a foreign gift. Either they just send in the form themselves or they reach out to a CPA who may not have been aware of the different types of delinquency procedures and then they send in the form or the delinquency procedure reasonable cause letter is insufficient and then they get a penalty. The penalty comes in normally on what's called a CP15 notice and then that leads to a 504 notice and there's lots of stuff in between there. But the question then becomes when the 504 notice appears, should they do a collection appeal or should they wait for a collection due process? Now, while both of these, the collection appeal program, collection due process are used to halt collections or, or to stop it or, or overrule it for, for lack of a better word, um, there are some considerations to take in. First is the collection appeal program form will come first. Okay, the 9423 is your first opportunity. But if you do that, then you cannot go to tax court afterwards on the same issue. So if you know the the 504 notice comes in and you you know you automatically run out and you do the collection appeal, uh, you can do a collection due process later, but you may not want to. Um, we have many clients who, if they can afford to pay the penalty, would prefer to pay the penalty, um, cut off the interest, and, and do it that way. Um, with a collection appeal program, if, if your goal is that you want to go to um, you want to go to tax court no matter what, uh, and this comes in, then here's what you do instead. Instead of filing the form 9423 and cutting off uh, your nose to spite your face, Instead, what you could do is just reach out to the IRS, see if you can um, get enforcement stayed. Normally, first time around, they'll do it anywhere from six weeks to 14 weeks, depending on who you get at the IRS. And if so, in a typical scenario, a person received a CP15 notice for a, a, a huge penalty. And so they're going to try to abate or, or use a reasonable cause to have that penalty dismissed. In the meantime, the enforcement process continues. So... Uh, once this letter comes in, you know, the, the taxpayer understandably gets freaked out and they think, well, let me rush off and do a collection appeal. Uh, the collection appeal may be a good opportunity, but if the goal of the taxpayer is to go to tax court, it's not. In addition, if the taxpayer has really bad facts and they're really just going to rely full on sympathy, they may also want to do collection due process instead. And the collection appeal is binding on both parties. So a, a lot of times when you're doing this type of, of research, collection due process will come up a lot more. Why? Because it's more robust. With collection due process, you can still go to tax court after the fact, and uh, you can dispute the underlying penalty and make a reasonable cause argument. Um, it's right there in the collection due process instructions, uh, whereas for collection appeal, it's not really used to dispute the penalty itself. Um, a reasonable cause doesn't really fly. Now, you know, you get a nice agent on a nice day. They may find some other formal uh, regulation to get around in order to make it work for you if, if they think it's absurd, especially with these gifts from foreign persons most of the time. It's your mom, your grandma, your dad, another relative giving you a gift. No one knew you had to report it because there's no income associated with it. The biggest negative with the collection due process is this. You have to wait until the end game, final notice, um, before pursuing it. Along the way, you're going to get these scary notices from the IRS. And with COVID and everything going on, a common scenario is agents only go to the office intermittently to check their mail. You send in the 12153. It gets stuck somewhere along the way, sitting in a pile, you know, I don't know, 10 feet tall of, of notices and letters. And, uh, and, and it just, no one ever gets notice of it at the IRS till it's too late and they put a false levy or lien on you. Now, of course, you'll be able to get it removed, but you know, having it still show up on your record, having to explain it in the future is a very big consideration for many people. So that's something to, to keep in mind. 
So the most important things to take away from this is if you get a, a penalty notice, timeliness is crucial. You want to make sure that you have a strategy from the outset in terms of how you want to move forward. Uh, when it comes time to hire someone, hire an experienced counsel, um, maybe they can avoid the penalty from the beginning with a reasonable cause submission. Um, otherwise, they can try to do an abatement after the fact. Uh, we have lots of free information available on our main website, goldenlawyers.com. Um, if you think it's appropriate, reach out to the firm and we can schedule a reduced fee initial consultation. Again, my name is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.